Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tear Studio and this is my full moon art for the month of February. Remember I am going to be doing a art about the full moon for each of the full moons this year in 2019. I also have a Facebook group called Full Moon Art that you can join and I will put the link below the video so that you can click on that, make sure that you answer the questions, and you can come and join that group and share your art inspired by this year's full moons. So for this February 2019, it is the snow moon. It's also the biggest, fullest super moon of 2019. In 2018, February didn't even have a full moon. This this year, we've got supermoons coming along last month and this month. Supermoon just means that the moon is at perigean, which is uh, as close to the Earth as it can be. So this one is quite close. It makes them look bigger. And so that's what I was trying to portray in my art today. Of course, it's a desert scene, and I also wanted to think about snow. In Tucson, where I live, in um, the United States, Arizona State, I don't get much snow. It might snow once a year, and it is not thick or heavy or deep. It's just a sprinkling, like frosting over the top of everything, and then it melts off very quickly. Not really enough to make a snowman or anything like that, but it's really pretty, and it coats all the mountains and the rocks and the tops of the cactuses in the sparkly white prettiness. And so I wanted to make something like that. What I'm using today is the Arteza acrylic pad, supposedly for acrylic painting. It's um, got a spiral bound uh, textured paper. And I'm also going to be using this gouache. Gouache is a watercolor that um, is more opaque. It's a little bit more like acrylic, but I was interested to see how a watercolor would react on this paper. This is only the second time I've used the paper. My full moon art from last month, I did collage on it. So this time I wanted to try something else and I wanted to be um, something simple, not, I'm not gonna, I don't, know, I don't have time this month to really go into huge, amounts of effort. I just, I needed to do a interesting quick painting. Um, I wanted to make a big moon, wanted some cactuses with snow on them. So I filled my watercolor palette. This one is really old and you can see how old it is because the, the, <laughs> the plastic is yellowed. I mean, this thing is like old and brittle, but it works. Um, it has 24 holes. And so I was able to put the Royal and Lag Nickel Essentials Gouache 24 colors in it. I didn't label them or anything. I didn't make a swatch chart or anything. I just went for it. And I started out by um, taping off my page to keep the lines around the edges clean. And then I, I drew some stuff on there using a um, Stabilo All Graphite Pencil. This is a highly water reactive pencil. So... I wasn't trying to make lines, I was trying to just give me some indications that would wash away with the water when I started to put watercolor on it, because that's what gouache is, is watercolor, although it's more opaque. So I started out with the moon and I was wanted to do a wet on wet technique. So I used a brush, a big fat brush to fill in that moon that I had drawn by using my tape <laughs> circle and then um, kind of just dotting some different colors on it to give a little bit of dimension to give it, you know, those spots that it has, which is where the craters are, the lakes or whatever they are. So that's what I was trying to do. I wasn't actually looking at a picture of the moon and I wished I had been because it does have some pretty distinctive patterns, but oh well, it still looks like the moon. Then I'm using some different colors of blue to paint in the the night sky. I could have used black and maybe it would have been more dramatic, but I just decided to go with a dark blue and then a lighter blue and then a more uh, kind of a teal blue on the edge. And I'm going around my little drawings as carefully as I can 
to try to keep the those those places white if I can so I can color them in later. Of course with watercolor it does lift a little bit when you go over so if you did mess up you could um, carefully clean the, the area that you're trying to keep white and get most of it off by just putting some water on there and then with the brush and then lifting it with a towel. Um, it, it works for gouache as well but I wasn't being that fussy I was just enjoying the process of painting and um, I am no watercolor or gouache expert. I The thing that always gets me <laughs> is that in order to have something white or light in watercolor, you need to leave it and not put any paint over it. I'm so used to being able to come back in at the end and put the white on with acrylic products like a Posca pen or acrylic paint, which is opaque and can cover, that I forget that it's the opposite when you're watercoloring. You really, you need to leave the light areas light because you don't have the option. If you're truly going with watercolor, you don't have the option of coming back in with an opaque product. Now gouache does have white. It has a titanium white and it has just a regular white um, that would be a more of a translucent white. So that titanium white in the gouache set should be opaque and I should be able to treat this more like an acrylic painting, although I didn't want to use acrylic. I wanted to try this product to see what it would be like on this paper. So after I'm done painting the sky, at first I liked the lines. Um, I, I did those, those curvy swooping lines on purpose in the sky, but then later on I didn't like them. So I changed them, but um, I liked them at first. <laughs> so then I'm filling in the, the um, rocks and dirt and ground around my plants and I've just drawn a few plants that are common in the desert. I have a big sorrel cactus, I have some uh, pipe cactuses, I've got some like kind of um, succulent or agave type plants, century plants, some prickly pear cactus, some barrel cactus. Um, these are things that I see every day. These are, are what the plants are like where I live. It's um, different from other people's. So then after I painted that in, then I went back in with just a damp brush with no pigment on it and patted around and then lifted the color to try to give, to start giving that, um, it's snowed on because the snow isn't going to be thick. It's going to be a sprinkling of snow that's landing on the high, the high points of things, but it's not crazy thick deep snow. So I wanted to lighten up some places to make it look like what it looks like when I see it or in a picture. So some other interesting things about this month's moon. Um, it's going to look its best on the 19th. So when you see this, this painting will be on the 20th. So you've already missed it. <laughs> I'm viewing it on the 19th. So some interesting things, um, the tide will be much higher on the 19th than it usually is because moons are what pull the tides. So it will be, well, it will be actually a couple days after there will be a very high tide. Um, for this super moon, there is another star that's accompanying it that's going to be very bright. It's the brightest star in the constellation of Leo, and it's named Regulus. So you'll be able to see that if you're if you're viewing um, kind of above the moon. Um, it's only truly full for a fleeting instant when it's 180 degrees opposite of the sun from the vantage of the Earth, which is on the 19th. Um, but it looks full the rest of the time. I mean, I from a, a naked eye standpoint, you can't really see. So it just looks really bright outside. And um, yeah, it's really cool. We'll have another super moon in March. So three in, three in succession, January, February, and March of this year, which will be kind of super cool. Um, let's see, do I know anything else? 
It has other names besides snow moon. Also, um, I think famine moon. And what else did I read? There's a couple other. These, these names are generally from like Native American peoples or um, all the other older cultures that had names for all the moons. But they're interesting and fun. So <laughs> I just want to continue this artwork. So I am continuing this artwork for this month. Um, now painting in the cactuses. I have several different colors of green in this set, which is helpful. Also, I'm mixing some of the green with a little bit of brown in some cases to make it more dull and dark for the shadowy areas. And with a watercolor product like gouache, you're going to be layering. So you start with, I, I generally, the way I do it is to start with kind of a light to mid tone and then go back in with a darker tone like I am right now to add the shadow side and then I go back in and either lift or put a lighter color with gouache you can put a lighter color because it does have a white but usually I would just go back in and kind of lift the areas that I want lighter if I didn't leave them light enough which is what I should do but I have a hard time doing it I just, like I said, I'm not a pro at this. This is practice, but I thought it worked out fine on this rough paper. A lot of watercolor paper is rough, uh, especially the cold press watercolor paper. It's very absorbent, but it has a texture on it. Um, there's also something called watercolor ground that you can apply to any type of paper to give yourself a watercolor uh, surface to use. Um, it even comes in colors. There's Daniel Smith has a gold one because, you know, they have that pretty gold gesso I've been playing with lately. They also have a gold watercolor ground, which is interesting. And Daniel Smith makes beautiful watercolors that are very professional and high pigmented. Um, what I have here is probably a student set of gouache, I would guess. But my brushes are also made um, by, well, two of the brushes I'm using are made by Royal Langnickel as well as the gouache. Um, the other two brushes are a little bit more expensive ones, but when you're trying to do something with watercolor or gouache, you want a type of brush that is very fat at the ferrule and then comes down to a tip so that it can absorb the water and retain a lot of moisture up near the, the base of the brush that will then feed into the tip, but then the tip is pointy so that you can do anything from a very fine line to a fatter line by pushing down with a little bit of extra pressure. So watercolor brushes are different than acrylic brushes and generally I don't have any like super expensive ones. I've got kind of a mid-range ones. I will link the ones, the specific ones that I have. Um, I have these U-T-R-E-C-H-T, Urecht, I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce that. And then the other ones are the Royal and Langnickel um, Zen brushes. Those are the silver ones. And I have a very fat, juicy one from them. And then I have a smaller round brush. There's also flat brushes and angled brushes and things that you can get for watercolor and specialty brushes that do special things. But since I'm not spending a lot of time watercoloring, I don't really need a whole huge amount of different types of brushes. It's not my medium of choice. Of course, number one for me is collage. Number two is acrylic. So um, watercolor is, is something I do a lot less. And also with this type of a thing, I probably would do mixed media. I would come in and, and maybe put some pastel on it or you know, something, but I just, I wanted to try this out and see if I could make something that I was satisfied with that was just <laughs> one product, <laughs> just the gouache and the acrylic paper. That's what I was trying out. So I hope you like it. I hope that um, it's, it conveys what I was trying to go for, kind of a super moon in the desert with snow. So now I'm adding the snow. This is using the, the titanium white gouache color that came in the set. And um, I have two whites there. The one closest to the right is the regular white. And then the one um, to, to the left is the titanium white. And I'm assuming, without swatching anything, 
that the regular white's going to be more translucent than the titanium white because titanium is a is an opaque type of a pigment. So um, that's why I'm using it to try to dab on some snow onto my scene. Also, I'm trying to make some variation in the sky. Remember I told you I didn't like those those lines. So I splattered on some clean water and then I used my towel to try to pick up some of the color. And then I end up just like using my moist towel to kind of rub over it and blur some of those very distinct paint lines. I think on a watercolor paper that that might not have happened as much, but I'm not sure. It could either be the gouache or it could be the paper, but I did get very distinct um, brush lines, which are painterly in some cases, but I just decided I didn't like them. So like I said earlier, I'm just continuing to go back in, add shadows, add highlights, um, a lot of layers. Here I start to like try to make maybe a cloud bank or something and maybe uh, smear some of those lines a little bit. I don't know. They're still bothering me. <laughs> At some point I might want lines like that. I thought maybe I did, but um, today I didn't. So I don't know. It's just... I just sit in my studio and play and try to get something that I like. So I did make some like splotchy bits and liney bits and stuff in the background as if there are plants in the distance. So we're trying to go for foreground. I didn't draw those. I just um, just put splatty bits of paint back there in kind of um, shapes that I think would represent shapes in the distance. Off on the mountain there's some, some saguaros and off over there there's some prickly pears and yeah I did them in browns mostly and then add a little bit of hot white highlight um, here I'm kind of I, I want a dark side on the moon I I think it that that's how it looks it usually has a dark and a light side um, even if it's a full moon it doesn't to me look solid white or whatever it's got uh, it's got a shadow on one side so I wanted to make sure that was there I'm using the Stabilo All Graphite Pencil and adding in some darker areas. And remember, this pencil is very water reactive. So if I go over it at all with water, it it becomes a dark watercolor. But if I just leave it, then it looks like a kind of a dark silvery graphite color. So I do blend some of it with a brush at some point. The final thing that I do is I have some of that gouache from Arteza that has pearly paint in it and I use a little bit of the bronze, the gold, and the white white and silver pearl on the moon and on the snow but you won't be able to see it. Even in the pictures it doesn't really shimmer like, you know, it just, it, I can see it if I tilt the paper to catch the light but it's not as dramatic as I had hoped it would be when I decided to do it. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bell so you know when the fresh new video comes out. And of course, you can share this if you want to. Um, you can use the link below the video to come and join the group, um, Full Moon Artwork, and share your artwork that you are doing inspired by the full moons for this year, 2019. Do make sure that you answer the questions. I won't accept you if you don't because I can't predict um, who might just be using the group to advertise or something like that. It's not for that. It's for sharing your moon art. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you ask to join. And of course, the products will be linked below the video like they always are if you would like to find this paint, these brushes, this paper, whatever, um, this pencil to do your own art. That will, of course, be available for you. If you use my links, I get a few cents. Well, the Amazon ones, not the other ones. <laughs> so anyway, that's it for me. And I will see you 
next month with a new full moon art. Bye.